Ben Drowned, or A Haunted Majora's Mask, is a well-known creepypasta, and later an alternate reality game, created by Alex Hall, also known as Jay Deucible. The story revolves around a Majora's Mask cartridge that is haunted by a ghost, or if it is a ghost, of a boy named Ben. Analysis and updates on a possible addition to the story from the original author can be found on the Judiciable Wiki. Nerd is the new sexy! Hello everybody, once again I am Wildfire1. This is Nerd is the New Sexy episode 67. And uh, with me today is... This is your boy, True. I hate this story. <laughs> and also with me is... Grizzly McBee, and I'm here because I have no clue who this guy is. I guess you're going to see how creeped out I get by this story, so I, I don't like scary stuff. That's pretty much the idea. <laughs> We're going to be talking about Ben Drown today, and it's... Uh, for those of you who don't know, it's basically a... a it's an online uh, creepy pasta. It's a creepy pasta about a haunted Majora's Mask game. We're going to start off by reading a little bit of the information to you, and we're going to give you some uh, some some of our input as well. I'm going to read the first post that came on uh, for creepy pasta for it because it was an ongoing thing. We're going to try and cut out some of the stuff that's just really not relevant, but we're going to go ahead and analyze everything step by step. And you know what? I'm not going to spoil anything. We'll see how this goes, and hopefully, everyone likes it. And I may come back for another episode. <laughs> this is the Halloween episode. This will be the Halloween episode because Halloween lands on a Tuesday and this is, you know, Sunday. So, so uh, we're going to start this story. Uh, post number one, September 7th, 2010. Okay, I need your help with this. This is not copy pasta. This is a long read, but I feel like my safety or well-being could very well depend on this. This is a video game related, specifically Majora's Mask. And this is the creepiest shit that has ever happened to me in my entire life. Having said that, I recently moved into my dorm room starting as a sophomore in college. And a friend of mine gave me his old Nintendo 64 to play. I was stoked, to say the least. I could finally play all those old games of my youth that I hadn't touched in at least a decade. His Nintendo 64 came with one yellow controller and a rather shoddy copy of Super Smash Brothers. And while beggars can't be choosers, needless to say, it didn't take long until I became bored of beating up level 9 CPUs. I'm going to have to stop you right there, because level 9 CPUs in Smash Brothers still sucks. <laughs> yeah, but if you think about it, though, it's the same game, and after a while that game's going to be boring. So I, okay, I, fair I, enough. I can't give him. Yeah, I think that's what he. I think that's what he was getting at there. Do continue. That weekend, I decided to drive around a few neighborhoods, about twenty minutes or so off campus, hitting up the local garage sales, hoping to score on some good deals of ignorant parents. I ended up picking up a copy of Pokemon Stadium, Goldeneye, Fuck Hell yeah, yeah. F Zero, and two other controllers for two dollars. Not a bad deal. No. See, Satisfied. that is, like, awesome right there. Yes. Oh, right? What, what, that's, I want to go to that garage sale. Because <laughs> if they're going to have that, what are they going to have at their next one? Too late, fucker. <laughs> <laughs> Satisfied, I began to drive out of the neighborhood when one last house caught my attention. I still have no idea why it did. There were no cars there, and only one table was set up with random junk but something sort of drew me there. That's always a bad sign right there. Just one table, <laughs> no cars. You look you look in the box and there's like severed fingers and shit. Yeah, that's a I bad sign. That I usually trust my gut on these things. So I got out of the car and I was greeted by an old man. His outward appearance was, for lack of a better word, displeasing. It was odd, if you ask me, to tell you why I thought he was displeasing. I couldn't really pinpoint anything there was just something about him that put me on edge i can't explain it all i can tell you is that if it wasn't in the middle of the afternoon and there were other people within shouting distance i would not have even thought of approaching this man rape rape <laughs> save my butthole oh, please <laughs> uh, you know i laugh but it is creepy i mean imagine just imagine being out there 
I think the only reason why you and I are cracking the wise jokes is because you and I are both familiar with this. And I, I, uh. but, yeah, but it, it, again, in the same situation, you put yourself in that that place and time. That's creepy as fuck. I don't give a shit if it's daytime, nighttime. <laughs> yeah, so continue. He flashed a crooked smile at me and asked what I was looking for, and immediately I noticed he must be blind in one of his eyes. His right eye has this glazed over look about it. I forced myself to look at his left eye instead, trying not to offend, and asked if he had any old video game. This is my good hand. <laughs> <laughs> I just, I, at least, he, it, just comes at to least mind. it didn't say that he was cross-eyed, because then you'd really be screwed. <laughs> you <couldn't look> away. <laughs> I was already wondering how I could politely excuse myself from the situation when he would tell me he had no idea what a video game was. But to my surprise, he said he had a few ones in an old box. He assured me he'd be back in a jiffy and turned his head back into the garage. As I watched him hobble away, I couldn't help but notice what he was selling on his table. Literally across the table were rather peculiar paintings, various artworks that looked like ink blots that a psychiatrist might show you. Curious, I looked through them. It was obvious why no one was visiting this guy's garage sales. These weren't aesthetically pleasing. As I came to the last one, for some reason it looked like Majora's Mask. The same heart-shaped body with little spikes protruding outward. Initially, I just thought of since... I was secretly hoping to find that game at these garage sales. Some Freudian bullshit was projecting itself in the ink plots. But given the events that happened afterward, I'm not so sure now. I should have asked the man about it. I wish I would have asked the man about it. After staring at a Majora-shaped blot, I looked up and the old man was suddenly there again, arm's length in front of me, smiling at me. I'll admit I jumped out of reflex and laughed nervously as he handed me a Nintendo 64 cartridge. It was the standard gray color... Except that someone had written Majora on the back in permanent marker. I got butterflies in my stomach. I realized what a coincidence this was and asked him how much he wanted for it. You getting creeped <laughs> out yet? Just a wee bit. The old man smiled at me and told me that I could have it for free. That I used to belong to a kid who was about my age that didn't live here anymore. There was something weird about how the man phrased that, but I didn't really pay attention to it then. I was too caught up not only in finding this game, but getting it for free. Isn't that great? Just just go to a place like that and they're like, oh yeah, you can have this game for free. There's nothing ominous about that. <laughs> Especially it's written in you black. You die in seven days, I swear. <laughs> <laughs> I, I reminded myself to be a bit skeptical since this looked like a pretty shady cartridge. There's no guarantee it would work. Then the optimist inside me interjected that maybe it was some kind of beta version or pirate version of the game and that it was all I needed to get to be back on Cloud9. I thanked the man and the man smiled at me and wished me well saying, goodbye then. At least, that's what it sounded like to me. All the way in the car right home, I had a nagging doubt that the man had said something else. My fears were confirmed when I booted up the game. To my surprise, it worked just fine. And there was one save file named simply Ben. Mm-hmm. Goodbye, Ben. He was saying, goodbye, Ben. I felt bad for the man. Obviously a grandparent and obviously going senile. And I, for some reason or another, reminded him of his grandson, Ben. Yeah, that's God, I hate this story. <laughs> That's not freaky one bit. I did shit it's myself. No bueno. how, how, how are you feeling there, Grizzly? I'm um, kind of wanting to go to the back side of the property I'm working at. That way I don't get cell service. But <laughs> <laughs> Out of curiosity, I looked at the save file. Eyeballing. I could tell that he was pretty far in the game. He had almost all of the masks and three-fourths remaining of the bosses. I noticed he'd used an owl statue to save his game. He was on day three by the stone tower temple with hardly an hour left before the moon would crash. I remember thinking that it was a shame that he had come so close to beating the game, but he had never finished it. I made a new file named Link out of tradition and started the game, ready to relive my childhood. So far, pretty good. So far, you know, not so... (laughs) Nothing nothing out of the ordinary, right? Like, except for the whole (laughs) end thing, you know? Goodbye, Ben. Why now? That was one of the save statues. That was a yeah. quick save thing. Yeah. For such a shady looking game cartridge, I was impressed on how smoothly it ran. Literally, just like a retail copy of the game. Save for a few minor hiccups here and there, like textures being where they shouldn't be, random flashes of cutscenes at odd intervals, but nothing too bad. However, the only thing that was a little unnerving was that at times the NPCs would call me Link, and at other times they would call me Ben. I figured it was just a bug, a fluke in the programming, causing our files to get mixed up or something. It did kind of creep me out, though, after a while. 
and it was around after I'd beaten the Woodfall Temple that I regrettably went into the save files and deleted Ben. I had intended to preserve the file just out of respect for the game's original owner. It's not like I needed two files anyways. Hoping that that would solve the problem, it did, and it didn't. Now NPCs wouldn't call me anything. Where my name should be in the dialogue, there was just a blank space. My save file was still called Link, though. Frustrated, and with homework to do, I put the game down for the day. The moral is don't buy games from creepy old men, and don't... And don't delete... Don't delete somebody else's save file. Don't delete your dick for doing that. Okay, that that is like the golden rule. If you have a game, you don't delete someone's save file. Unless all three (laughs) files are taken, you delete one. Okay, then, yeah, you delete the one that's, you know, hasn't been touched in a while. Yeah, you delete the one with the least amount of progression. You don't say, (laughs) you don't delete the one that says Ben. (laughs) Especially when someone said goodbye, Ben. I started playing the game again last night. Getting the lens of truth and working my way towards completing the Snowhead Temple. Now, some of you more hardcore Majora's Mask players know about the fourth day glitch. For those of you who don't, you can Google it, but the gist of it is that right as the clock is about to hit midnight on the final day, you talk to the astronomer and look through the telescope. If you time it right, the countdown dis- disappears and you essentially have another day to finish whatever you were doing. Deciding to do the glitch and try to finish Snowhead Temple, I happened to get it right on the first try, and the time counter at the bottom disappeared. Well, you know, it, it's creepy, not necessarily scary yet. We'll, we'll see how it goes. All right, do continue. <laughs> However, when I pressed B to exit the telescope, instead of being greeted by the astronomer, I found myself in the Majora's Boss fight room at the end of the game. The trippy boxed in arena. Staring at Skull Kid hovering above me, there was no sound, just him floating in the air above me. And the background music, which was regular for the area, still creepy. Immediately, my palms began to sweat. This was definitely not normal. Skull Kid never appeared here. I tried moving around the area, and no matter where I went, Skull Kid would always be facing me, looking at me, not saying anything. Nothing would happen, though, and this kept up for around 60 seconds. I thought the game had bugged or something, but I was beginning to doubt that very much. So now he's in a boss fight room, like at the end of the game, and one of the NPCs is just following him around. <laughs> if, it, like said, if that NPC is Ben, I'm going to lose my shit. So, Why are we doing this again? Well, it was your idea, you asshole. You're suffering, so... <clears throat> I was about to reach for the reset button when the text appeared on my screen. You're not sure why, but you apparently had a reservation. I instantly recognized that text. You get that message when you get the room key from Anju in the stockpot in, but why is it playing here? I refuse to entertain the notion that it was almost as if the game was trying to communicate with me. I started to navigate the room again, testing to see if there was some sort of trigger that enabled me to interact with something here. Then I realized how stupid I was. To even think that someone could reprogram the game like this was absurd. Sure enough, 15 seconds later, another message appeared on the screen, and again, like the first one, it was already a pre-existing phrase. Go to the lair of the temple boss. Yes, no. I paused for a second, contemplating what I should press and how the game would react, when I realized I couldn't select no. Taking a deep breath, I pressed yes, and the screen faded to white, with the words, Dawn of a New Day. With the subtext, just a bunch of straight lines, I, I, where I was ported to, to fill me with the most intense sense of dread and impending fear I'd ever experienced. Yes, he, he has no no way to say no. He has to say yes to this, and it it basically almost the dawn of the new day. I believe is the the text that comes up when the game starts. Whenever you do the reset, when you reset time. Yeah, it just said that, and it ported him to like a, a very intense area. The only way I can describe the way I felt here is having this feeling of inexplicable depression of a profound scale. I am normally not a depressed person. But the way I felt here was a feeling that I didn't even know existed. It was such a twisted, powerful presence that seemed to wash over me. Oh, oh God. God, I hate this story. Go ahead, True. You go, go ahead and continue from here. I appeared in some kind of weird Twilight Zone version of Clock Town. I walked out of the Clock Tower, as you normally do when you start from day one, only to find that all of the inhabitants were gone. Usually with the fourth day glitch, you can still find the guards and the dog that runs around outside the tower. This time, they were all gone. What replaced them was the ominous feeling that there was something out there, in the same area as me, and that it was watching me. I had four hearts to my name, and the hero's bow. 
But at this point, I wasn't even con- considered. I think it's supposed to be concerned. Considered yeah. for my avatar. I felt that personally I was in some kind of danger. Perhaps the most chilling thing was the music. The song of healing ripped straight from the game itself, but it played in reverse. The music would get louder, building up, so you should expect something to pop out at you, but nothing ever did. And the constant loop began to wear on my mental state. That's, that song backwards is actually crazy. <laughs> we've, we've heard that song backwards because of this. <laughs> because of this stupid story, that song scares the crap out of me. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't heard it, but I'm sure when I do, it'll. Well, you'll hear it when I do the pod. When I put it in the podcast, looping <laughs> over. Oh boy! You realize I'm out here by myself until uh. seven a.m. Right? And it's. Yep, we lost him. Oh, he's back. Is he alive? Okay. <laughs> Freaking thought... Ben attacked my system. I thought the old man got you. <laughs> oh boy, that freaked me out. <laughs> God damn it. Oh, god damn it. That fucking sucked. (laughs) (laughs) I kind of wish we had planned that, because this is like general, genuine fear. Well, and the fact that I was getting all the inspired. The robot's back. And then there goes the... Okay, well, there goes that point. That got muted (laughs) real quick. (laughs) (sighs) All right. Continue on. Every now and then I would hear the faint laugh of the happy mask salesman in the background. <laughs> just quiet enough so that I wasn't sure if I was just hearing things, but just loud enough to keep me determined to find him. I looked in all four zones of Clock Town, only to find nothing. No one. Textures were missing, unless Clock Town had me walking on air. The entire area felt broken. Hopelessly broken. As the reverse song of healing repeated for what must have been the 50th time, I just remember standing in the middle of South Clock Town realizing that I'd never felt so alone in a video game before. That is pretty bad, feeling alone in a video game. You know, the only time I ever felt alone in a video game was like Dark Souls. Oh, there's a lot of games that I felt alone in, like Silent Hill. As I walked through the ghost town, I don't know whether it was a combination of the out-of-place textures and the atmosphere and the haunting melody of a once peaceful and soothing song being butchered and distorted, but I was literally on the verge of tears, and I had no idea why. I hardly ever cry. <laughs> Something had gripped me here, and this powerful sense of depression that was both foreign and crippling. So the old man, the old man. was touching. Yeah. <laughs> it was the old man. It was, it was very powerful and crippling. <laughs> <laughs> and foreign, so he must have been from like Europe or something. This is how we do things in my place. Oh boy. <laughs> I tried leaving Clock Town, but every time I attempted to zone out, the screen would fade to black and I would just zone in to another part of Clock Town. <laughs> I tried playing the Ocarina. I wanted to escape and I did not want to be here. But every time I played the Song of Time or Song of Soaring, it would say, Your note echoed far, but nothing happens. Th- at that point, I would turn the fucking game off and just go to bed. Yeah. Good night. It, yeah. <laughs> By this point, it was obvious the game didn't want me to leave. You think? But I had no idea why it was keeping me here. I didn't want to go inside the buildings. I felt that I would be too vulnerable there to whatever I was terrified of. I don't know why, but I came up with the idea that maybe if I drowned myself oh shit, at the laundry pool, I would spawn somewhere else and leave the game. Why would you ever fucking think to do that? <laughs> I think oh, I'd rather climb up into a building and just swan dive. Yeah, but I don't think there was any any choice in that matter. I think that the only thing that there was, he was so desperate to get get rid of everything, and he was so so depressed from the game that he was just like, I'm just going to end it all right now. As I zoned in and ran towards the pool, that's when it happened. Link grabbed his head, and the screen flashed for a brief moment of the happy mask salesman smiling at me. Not Link, me, with Skull Kid's screen playing in the background. And when the screen returned... I was staring at the Link statue from playing the song Elegy of Emptiness. I screamed as the thing just stared back at me with that haunting facial expression. 
I turned Oof. around and ran out and back into the south clock town. And to my horror, the fucking statue followed me. And me and the only way I can compare this is like the weeping angels from Doctor Who. Every so often, <laughs> at random intervals, the animation would play of the statue appearing behind me. It was like the thing was chasing me, or I don't even want to fucking say it, haunting me. We are not playing this game, this hack, by the way. I am oh, not doing you, it. This yeah, we are. This is happening. No, fuck that. I fucking... All three of us, we're going to hold hands and stay together. We're not doing this shit separately. <laughs> Until one of us disappears, and the other one, and then the one after that. And finally, the game had its revenge. By this point, I was on the verge of hysterics, but not even once did the thought of turning off the console occur to me. Really? <laughs> oh, yeah, I'd have been idiot. like, fuck this shit. I'm out. <sighs> fuck that shit, I'm out. <laughs> I don't know why. I was so wrapped up in it. The terror felt all so real. I tried to shake the statue, but it would literally appear right behind me every single time. Leek started to begin to make weird animations I'd never seen him do before. He would flail his arms around or spasm randomly. And the screen would cut to the happy mask salesman smiling again for a brief moment before I was face to face with the fucking statue again. I ended up running into the Swordmaster's dojo and ran to the back. I don't know why, but in my panic, I just wanted some kind of assurance that I'm not alone here. To my dismay, I found no one. But as I turned to leave, the statue cornered me in the cubby in the back. I tried attacking the statue with my sword, but to no avail. Confused and backed into a corner, I just stared at the statue, waiting for it to kill me. Suddenly, the screen flashed again to the happy mask salesman, and Link turned to face my screen, standing upright, mirroring the statue, looking at me along with his copy, literally staring at me. Whatever was left of the fourth wall was completely shattered. While I ran out of the dojo terrified, suddenly the game warped me into an underground tunnel, and the reverse song of healing queued up again as I was given a brief moment of rest before the statue started appearing behind me again, this time aggressive. I could only take a few steps before it would summon behind me again. I hurriedly made my way out of the tunnel and appeared in Southern Clock Town. As I ran aimlessly in a sheer panic, suddenly a re-dead scream and the screen faded to black as dawn of a new day. And well, the, the vertical lines for the name appeared again. I don't know what to say about that part. That I hate that re-dead scream. Fucking statue and that re-dead scream. <laughs> how would you react um, imagine imagine sitting there playing this game like you're you're playing this game on your on your on your nintendo 64 and this shit happens how would you react to that true you know i'm reminded of the scene where you're going in chrono trigger <laughs> when you're going to go face magus and all when I mean, you get into that room because you know how you're seeing all the townspeople and everything and they're all just creepy you get into that room with the three children, and they're just standing there giggling when you talk to them. Yeah. Yeah. That I turned weird. the game off. <laughs> I was like, nope. I'm not doing this anymore right now. A creepy I thing. wouldn't even turn the game off. I'd just pull that cartridge straight out and check that damn thing at the wall. <laughs> you know, just to be safe, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and put throw that at the wall. Just to be safe, I'm going to pick up the piece and throw it in the trash. Just to be safe. I'm no, gonna... you take it out back and you burn that damn thing. <laughs> Just to be safe, I'm going to light it on fire. Yeah, that's the ultimate safety. So, continue on. The screen faded in and I was standing on the top of Clock Tower with Skull Kid hovering over me again. I looked up and the moon was back, looming just meters above my head. The Skull Kid just stared at me, hauntingly with that fucking mask. A new song was playing. The Stone Tower Temple theme played in reverse. In some sort of desperate attempt, I equipped my bow and fired off a shot at the Skull Kid, and it actually hit him, and he played an animation of him reeling back. I fired again, and on the third arrow, a text box appeared saying, that won't do you any good, and I was picked up off the ground, levitated upwards on my back, and then Link screamed as he burst into flames, instantly killing him. That didn't work. That does not work. That will not work. That was not good. How are you feeling right now, Grizzly? No. <laughs> I've decided that uh, I'm not playing that fucking game. <laughs> that fucking mask salesman, dude. That fucking creepy fuck. Laughing shit. <laughs> Continue. I jumped when this happened. I had never seen them. 
this move used by anyone in the game. And Skullkin himself didn't have any moves. As the death screen played, my lifeless body still burning. Skullkid laughed, and the screen faded to black, only to have me reappear in the same place. I decided to charge him, but the same thing happened. Link's body lifted off the ground by some unknown force, and then he immediately burst into flames again, killing him. This time, during the death screen, the faint sounds of the reverse sonic healing could be heard. On my third and final try, I noticed that there was no music playing this time, that all there was was an eerie silence. I remember that in the original encounter with Skull Kid, you were supposed to use the ocarina to either travel back in time or summon the giant. I attempted to play the song of time, but before I could hit the last note, Link's body once again horrifically exploded into flames and died. There's just no winning. There's just, just, there's nothing. You can't. That's the game telling you you're fucked. At this point, I'm like, why am I still playing? Why am I here? <laughs> why is this game still it's... in my, my, I've got other games I can play. Just jump onto that Pokemon Stadium. Jeez. <laughs> <laughs> At least then you can take out your frustrations on Pikachu or something. Jeez. <laughs> what if Pikachu is like drowning? Oh boy. Well, then you throw out a freaking Bulbasaur or Squirtle or hell, even a Psyduck and just hold that bastard under. At least that way you can get some Pikachu drowning. You know, <laughs> some reassurance that, that something can actually die in a game. I need you to tell me. It's okay for me to leave. <laughs> <laughs> All right, continue. As the death screen neared its end, it began to chug as if the cartridge was trying to process a lot of something. When the screen came to, it was the same scene as the first three times, except this time, Link was lying on the ground and found dead in a position I'd never seen in the game before. His head tilted towards the camera with the Skull Kid floating above him. I couldn't move. I couldn't press any buttons. All I could do is just stare at Link's dead body. After around 30 seconds of this, the game simply fades out with the message, you've met with a terrible fate, haven't you? Before kicking you out to the title screen. Fuck that. <laughs> <laughs> you know what would be funny is if all this was like, someone someone in Nintendo who got fired was like, fuck these guys, and just like made <laughs> one game. One game Spoilers! Like, yeah, he's like, I'm just gonna, whoever gets this game is gonna be fucked. Now fuck with her head. Upon getting back to the title screen and starting again, I noticed my save file was no longer there. Instead of Link, it was replaced with Your Turn. Your Turn had three hearts, zero masks, and no items. I selected Your Turn, and immediately when I did, I was returned to Clock Tower rooftop scene of my Link dead and the Skull Kid hovering over. The Skull Kid laughing, looping again and again. I quickly hit the reset button, and when the game booted up again... There was one more save file added below. Your turn, entitled Ben. Fuck. Ben's save file is right back where it was before. I deleted it. At Stone Tower Temple, with the moon almost crashing. <laughs> it's like... It, came, oh. it, came, it literally came back from the dead. The, that, that, <laughs> that Ben save okay. file. Your turn. <laughs> I turned the game off at that point. I'm not superstitious, but this is way too fucked up even for me. And I would have to agree. Mm -hmm. I haven't played it at all today. Hell, I didn't even get any sleep last night. I kept hearing the reverse song of healing music to the head. And just remember the sense of dread I felt exploring Clock Town. I drove back to the old man's house today to ask him some questions with a buddy of mine. No way I was going there alone. Mm -hmm. He's getting smart. Only to find out there's a for sale sign in the front yard. And when I rang the door, no one was home. Nobody's home. You got suckered, you dumb shit. Nobody's home. Oh. Like, I'm, 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 I'm coming to return this game that I got for free. It happens to be possessed Nobody by people. <laughs> they don't want it back. That's a big fucking sign. So now I'm back here writing down the rest of my thoughts and recording what happened. I'm sorry if some of this... Some of this has grammatical errors and whatnot. I'm running on no sleep here. I'm terrified of this game. Even more so now that I relived it a second time writing this all down. But I feel like there's still more to it than meets the eye. And that there's something calling to me to investigate this further. I think Ben is something in this equation, but I don't know what. And if I could get a hold of the old man, 
then I would be able to find some answers. I need another day or so to recuperate before tackling this game again. It's already taken a toll on my sanity, I feel like. But next time I do this, I'm going to be recording my footage all the way through. The idea to record only came to me towards the end. So you can see the last few minutes of what I saw, including Skull Kid and the Illogy statue. But it's on YouTube here. <laughs> like, is that an actual like, YouTube video? or? Yeah, it's an actual YouTube video. <laughs> Are you shitting me? No, I'm not. <laughs> Don't watch it. Yeah. Or at least, if you're going to watch it, let us record you watching it. Yeah. <laughs> Creepy as fuck. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> I can record it on... Uh, oh, fuck! What? <laughs> I can record it on my phone, and then I'll just send it to Wild later. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah I've got... I think I had a week. really great suggestion about doing this. I didn't think it was going to go this well, and I'm genuinely creeped out again about this fucking story. I'm going to stay in this thread for a little while longer before I fall asleep to answer any questions you guys might have, or hopefully listen to your ideas or theories to help me shed some light into this, or maybe things I have to, I should try to do. I think I'm going to play Ben's file tomorrow to see what happens. Maybe I was supposed to do that all along. I don't believe in paranormal shit, but this is a little fucked up. But maybe this Ben guy is just a really good hacker slash programmer. I don't want to think about the alternatives if he isn't. Uh, you know, I can't blame him. <laughs> I can't. I, w I would want to, I'd be, I'd think, honestly, I'd be thinking the same thing. I'd be like, oh God, I hope this is like a hacking. I hope I got a, I just hope I got a really fucked up cartridge. You I mean, like I said, someone got fired and they were pissed off and they, put one of these out just to piss someone off and not, not i hope this i hope my i hope my zelda game isn't possessed you know <laughs> Fuck. that's the end of the copy slash paste i'm hoping that maybe there's some kind of running gag the developers had or that other people have gotten the gag or hacked copies of the game like this this just really scares me no shit and that was the end of, that was the end of that post the first post post number one Fuck. <laughs> So shit, shit's happening. Really bad shit. To reiterate, so far we have a guy goes up to this 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 little old man's house who's like I say little old man. He could be a big old man. It don't matter. Scary old man's house who basically sells him this game that doesn't even look like you know it's the cartridge, but it doesn't, doesn't gives him the it. game. Well, he gives him yeah, he gives him the game. It's basically just the cartridge. It doesn't have anything on it except for in what black marker. Yep. Yeah, yeah, Legend of Zelda: Majora's Mask, and then all this other shit ensues where he's playing and all this stuff doesn't happen. It happens it shouldn't happen, and he's getting followed around by this horrible uh, Link statue. And the bin, he deleted the bin save, and this, that that bin save comes back, and so that's pretty bad. Like that's that's a bad first day, I would say, or a bad first, you know. Your turn. <laughs> Your turn, yes. If you saw that in a game like this and it said your turn, what would you think? <laughs> fuck this game. <laughs> I'd make another. I'd make another safe game. Say fuck you. I'm out. <laughs> <laughs> I'd make one that says no. Fuck you. Your turn. <laughs> <laughs> this is this is Zelda, not chess, guys. <laughs> Take that bitch outside, toss it up in the air, and shoot it with a shotgun. Get a fucking young priest and an old priest. Fucking holy water. Dip that shit in holy water. Watch it fucking melt. <laughs> the story gets really, really great as it continues on. Yes. Well, I, I know myself and uh, I already know the story, but what do you think, a Grizzly? I mean, I like games. <laughs> <laughs> but when it comes to shit like this, I mean, you know, I really don't want to watch this video, but it's for the fans. <laughs> Damn it! It's not. It's not cool. It, it is not fucking cool, we'll, dude. We'll have we'll have his reaction to it. It'll be on the Facebook page and probably the uh, YouTube page. All right, guys. We hope you enjoyed uh, this haunted, scary uh, Halloween episode, and we'll see you next week as usual. And uh, we hope you have a wonderful, safe Halloween. Don't get don't run into little old men trying to give you video games. <laughs>
Does anyone else have anything you want to say? Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> this is your boy, True. I hope you guys enjoyed this very, very <sighs> fucking creepy pasta. And uh, you all stay sexy out there. Always. Stay sexy, everybody. <laughs>